All right, everybody, I want to begin with uh, the bootstrap lesson by just talking about the basic structure of your page and um, basically getting everything started and then how it is used to lay out the, the rows and columns. Those are the core ideas right now that I want you to be thinking about is the rows and columns and how you divide them up to make specific layouts to however it is that you want. Uh, your page to look. So I highly recommend that when you are starting out you make yourself a startup folder that you can dupli copy and duplicate. So I've created one called Starter Template. So anytime I want to create a bootstrap site I'll already have uh, the very basic things set up for myself. And what that means is my my code that I'm going to be using needs to be already linked to, or I'm just to save time, I'm already linking it to the files within my bootstrap folder. So I've got my CSS files, I've got my minimized CSS, I've got my own style sheet which is going to be blank at the moment. This is where I'll add my own specific styles to things the JavaScript files are here and it's going to have my jQuery, my bootstrap, and then my strips.js. Uh, we typically aren't going to be writing anything to that right now, but I, we will have it connected. I'll have my images, whatever images I want to use for my, uh, for my lessons, and my fonts. Now, when you download Bootstrap. Bootstrap is going to provide you with these things. So, for instance, whatever version of Bootstrap you're downloading, you're going to get a core, uh, a, a bunch of these uh, documents. But the ones that you want to make sure you're using is your JavaScript, and you want to just make sure everything is connected. The lynda.com lesson that we use uh, does that, uh, explains that to you. We have talked about CSS, but if you're ever in need, and I refer to these resources all the time, I simply go to W3Schools and I go to CSS and I say how to and it says there's ways to insert CSS. We are using the external style sheet. So here's the basic code you need to put in the head. So I can copy this, paste it into my page twice, and then just simply change the, the href here to match where the file is within my actual folder. So it's in a CSS relative to my index uh, page. It's in a CSS folder and I give it the name. When they're connected, uh, when you're in Dreamweaver, it will pop up here and you will be able to see that. If you're not in Dreamweaver, you want to make sure that this is connected and then we'll test it out by just changing some source information to make sure it works. Same with this one. This is going to be my CSS sheet that corresponds to my CSS folder and a styles sheet. All of that is consistent with where I am putting not this folder but the one I'm actually working out of. These are my style sheet. So here's my style CSS. Here's my style CSS. That's the one I'm creating. Bootstrap provided me a minimized version. It looks kind of like gibberish, but it's actually just all the same CSS code in the longer version without any spaces. So they just take out all the spaces. And the computer can read that. And I'm not going to modify that. I'm not actually going to modify that at all. The one I'm going to change for my own color palettes and, and spacings and stuff is going to be this one, which I will, uh, I will make. Uh, so here's the page. This has the code. There's nothing there yet. The minimized version is here. The same for my JavaScript. When I go down, if I don't know how to do this, I'm going to go into W3Schools. So I'm at W3Schools.com. I'm going to click on JavaScript, JavaScript where to, basically find out where to and how to insert it. And the example that we're using is going to be in the body. So the content or the, 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 the link to the script, it's going to come in the body. You have the ability to put it in the head if you want, but for speed of loading, it's something that can happen later on. So you could put it up in the head region, 
but for what we're doing we're going to put it in the body region and we're going to just put in our source code so our, our code is going to look something like this it's going to be a source and we're going to point to the name of the file in the JS folder so this one doesn't have a JS folder this is relative to it but in our case we're going to go down to the body and we're going to say look in the JS folder for the file jQuery-2.2.0 min and this JavaScript file for bootstrap and then another file that we can add our own JavaScript to okay so I want to make sure that those files are all uh, accurate and I want to make sure that the names match so I'm in the JS folder and here's my javascript.js here's my jQuery 2.2.0 whatever version you're using the point of it is they have to it has to find the file so if you're using 10.1 whatever the most current thing is don't get thrown off by that just make sure that the the path leads to the correct document and when you do that then we're going to want to make sure things work out and the way that I typically do it is I usually go to my style sheet uh, and I will make a, a selector and I will see if I can change it typically I'll change the body to a different color like a, a gray or something just to something to immediately make sure that things are working if it isn't then I've got to go figure out what I've done wrong maybe I spelled something wrong maybe my files are in the wrong folder maybe I uh, uh, didn't put it in the head maybe I misspelled something or didn't close a tag okay the rest of this is just your core the metadata uh, this makes sure that it's going to be read with the most recent uh, Internet Explorer Edge uh, version this makes sure that the page is scalable it's responsive that it opens up on the device itself whatever the device size is and it doesn't try to put something giant on a screen that's really really small and the rest of it is just our links to CSS and then we have our title so we have those things all in our head first then we have our body and this is just some HTML just so we can see something on the page then we have our JavaScript down here we close our HTML and we have this so if that is right uh, the first thing I want to try to do is just make sure uh, I can control my my actual content um, and I will pick a color and I can just pick a gray color whatever it is or I can just put a value in this will give me a hexadecimal value and I'll close it off and if I refresh my page I'll see that that changed so that tells me my CSS is working alright if it wasn't working then I wouldn't be able to change the color and if I added uh, a font or just the word color and I changed my font to say red this will blow my retinas out but if I did that I expect it to change so that's a very simple test to make sure that things are working properly that my actual code is working and so right now I'm gonna move this I'm just gonna put in my FFF which is white and I'm gonna change this back to black which is just zero 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 and if I change that back I should get black text on a white background so that that ensures and I'm gonna save that and make sure everything is gonna work all right so now the next thing is to start to subdivide and organize my actual page my page needs to be basically an illustration of that is this we have what's called uh, our containers so in the past we've used containers to hold things and I'm I put margins on these just so that you can see that it's a container inside a container inside a container mentality you don't have to show them a container inside a container can be the exact same size as its parent container um, the margins of your container can go to the edges of your browser uh, window whatever that is or to the device so you don't have to have it looking like boxes within boxes within boxes but just so you realize that the boxes are there I'm trying to show you this so from the very beginning you start with a blank page and we start to then put in 
a flexible container, a container that's going to expand and contract with the size of a browser window. So if I'm using a phone, maybe my, my browser, maybe my, my device window is you know a few hundred pixels wide. If I'm using an iPad or something like that, then it's going to be a little bit bigger. If I'm using a, a you know an, an older monitor, it'll be slightly larger than your your iPad. And if I'm using a giant uh, or a much larger monitor, then that's going to be bigger yet. And if it's on a TV or a screen, it can expand to all of these things. And that's what we want. Um, in this particular case, we want it to expand. Uh, and change. So for instance, in the example that I use in class, we have uh, a web oops, uh, a web page like our project 5, but I want it to be responsive. So when I hit a certain point in its width, the columns that I have designated are going to then stack on top of one another vertically my navigation should uh, uh, could also change uh, but things are going the point of it is is that things are going to change the way that you want uh, depending on the size and so when we do that I will want that to to be designed to be broken down into different portions okay and so what I want to do is then begin with an outer container that everything is going to fit inside. Then I'm going to start breaking that container down into rows that hold containers. Every time I want to kind of think about this as a section of content, I will start with a row class. And in that, I will put a container that holds other things, other containers, maybe a series of smaller containers. And this is when I start to use my core uh, HTML5 divisions like navigation. Inside my navigation division, uh, I can put in my, un my lists. Uh, I can put in my headers to have content. I can put in banners. I can put in sidebars. I can put in all kinds of things. But the point of it is you have to control to say, okay, this is where I'm going to start a main, uh, a clear division. I'll make it a row. Uh, I'll make it a row. And in that, I will put a container that holds other information. Now, I try not to get too many containers inside containers inside containers because it can get really confusing and you want to spend a good amount of time making sure that you label the beginnings and the ends of the divs that you create so that you can keep track of them. Now, obviously, the HTML5 elements are clearly marked with designated beginnings and ends. But when we start to have classes that make up columns, that can start to get confusing where they begin and where they end. So I start to label them, uh, especially if they're different sizes. So you could have, using the grid, the grid will take up eight units. A full grid row would take up 12 units. So imagine a full unit or a full row across the entire screen will be 12. But if I want to break that into, say, four columns, then I would need to divide 12 by 4 and make each column 3. So in this particular case, I'm going to choose a column with a medium breakpoint. Uh, that means it's going to break at around 700 and some pixels. And I'm going to make, uh, that's when it's going to expand actually. It's going to begin being compressed. So it's going to start as if it's in a mobile device. And then when my web page opens up, to 700 some pixels, it will then snap into columns side by side, horizontal columns. If you want to see that actually in action, you can hit Control Shift I, and you can actually go into this uh, uh, little piece here that'll allow me to talk, slide around this element. Notice up here it's telling me the size. I've chosen this toggle responsive, and as I slide this you'll notice that I have a point here around 700 or so when this page is going to go and become wide there they they went so there's my stacking columns and then they turn into 
side by side columns at 700 and around, well, this is a little bit wider at medium and around 900. And we can adjust.